Good morning, believers. Good morning, Israel. Uh, it's your brother, J.D. Nijah. Back with a message. Bible message. I'm here at Bolsa Chica State Beach. Ah, beautiful. World famous Huntington Beach, California. Look at these crazy surfers. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty cold right now it's probably, I don't know it's not that cold, I'm a sissy when it comes to the cold these days I'm getting older but um, it's probably I don't know, 49 water's probably 57 but um, yeah, these guys are out here in the water already <laughs> I'm not going out there until it warms up a little bit but um good morning good morning um believers and Israel all praises honor and glory to the most high Yahweh Yahweh Vave the tetragrammaton the father of spirits My phone does pretty good for surfing. I just have to make sure that I tone down the um, the zoom once uh, once I get back to the truck. Otherwise, you'll be looking up my nose again, <laughs> like the day I went and saw my my son and my grandsons play baseball. A little bit of waves today. Let's see if these guys get one. Both ways. Anyhow, I'm gonna go back to the truck and have some coffee. Beautiful clear skies, no, no chemtrails. Hold on. No chemtrails. Interesting. Some days they spray like crazy, and then other days they're not spraying at all. It's perfectly clear. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. They're going to bring rain into. What is it? Monday. Today's Saturday. Oh! Oh! oh. Fuck yeah. I was almost ready. There we go. Raw. All right. So, um, good morning. Heavenly Father, bless this message. Bless the ears that hear it. Comfort your people in these crazy days that we live in, these. Oh, what would the word be? Um, evil. <laughs> Bless us in these evil days and give us strength and, and power to get through it. Amen. New subscribers. Hey. I, I actually pushed over 70 subscribers. Wow. Is that because, uh, gosh darn it, no, that's no good, can't find my glasses. Do I give up? Come on, really? I like those readers. Sorry about that. Anyway, all right, well, let's get to the message. Since I'm just sitting here wasting time. 
if I can read it. So um, I was listening to a, a, <clears throat> a channel. The guy's name, I think his channel's name, Knowledge and Wisdom, Isaiah 33.5 or 33.6, something like that. He's the one I was talking talking about who um, he talks about just things. It's kind of cool. He just talks about things, about his life, about uh, about what's going on um, in his world and some of his struggles and things like that. But anyway, you might want to check him out. I'll put that. I'll put the name of the channel in the description box. But um, he brought up a good point that I wanted to um, wanted to emphasize because you know we got these uh, these black Hebrew Israelites out here that are deceiving the some of our people. Let's just say they're deceiving people. Uh, which I don't like because they um, they claim to be these great Bible scholars and they're they're coming awake and they're they're exiting the matrix through their belief in in the Lord and um it's they're not they're not right so what this brother was bringing up um <laughs> it ended up being really funny because he was he was talking about regeneration we know regeneration is the um the spirit coming back and coming back as a as a spirit to be judged in a new body so you regenerate you come back and you are um You're judged under the sun. It says so in Ecclesiastes 3.16, if you want to look that up, 3.11 through 16. Um, and he saw under the sun the place of judgment and the place of righteousness. So when we come back, we either purge ourselves from our wickedness and our evil um, through, the, through the Holy Spirit, and we become... Like I was saying in yesterday's message, a new man, a new, you'll have a new name and that new name will depend on, um, who you were in the past. Saul became Paul. King Saul became Paul, the apostle. And, um, this is what the brother was bringing out and it, it's, it's, it's charming because he's doing it in a very innocent spirit. And what I like about it is he's, he's doing a lot like I do. He's trying to figure things out, but he's not afraid to say, um, this is what I believe. This is what, this is what the Holy spirit tells me. So what, what he was saying, he was, he was bringing up regeneration and, he was talking about Moses being Jacob and um, Pharaoh being um, a type of Esau. So Pharaoh, Moses, Pharaoh, Jacob, Esau. And then he went into um, Saul, David being Paul, Peter, right? Saul is Paul, David, Peter. And then um, it was cute because uh, he was trying to make some kind of um, argument about them fighting. They're all, they're fighting. E Jacob and Esau fighting. David and David and Saul are fighting. And Peter and Paul were fighting. And then he realized that um, that Paul and Saul were Israelites. <laughs> and at the end, he. He flabbergasted himself because he realized that um, it's the same people. It's Israel. 
and um, <laughs> he had to cut the video off because he was like, well, wait, Paul is a Be Benjamite. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, it was it was great. I'm like, yeah, bro. That's what I've been trying to tell you people. It's not okay. So so the the point of the message is I'm gonna get down to it. So I've been saying this for a while, even about myself. Part of the reason I am who I am and how I'm, why I'm so. Set on doing these messages and set on on studying the Bible and knowing it. Um, I don't really have any choice. As Adonijah, I really screwed up in that life. I really screwed up. I tried to wrestle the kingdom from Solomon. That's like that's like I'm one of the wickedest spirits in the Bible. So now in the regeneration, um. Instead of being the guy that's all for himself, because that's what who Adonijah was. He was all about himself. He was selfish. He was self-centered. He wanted the kingdom for himself. He thought he deserved it. He was prideful. He was all these things. So Jeff Deloach, JD Nijah, is um. I have to be the exact opposite. And that's the point I'm going to make about um, Saul and David and Peter and Paul. Um, and it's it's pro, it's becoming pretty obvious to me. That's that's how the um, regeneration works and the judgment that takes place when you regenerate has a lot to do with um, your repentance, your your change of heart, your being born again, right? You're, you're starting over. You're born again. You have a chance to seek the Lord. And, and he was saying that, seek the Lord, knock and you will find. And, and it was interesting because that's part of what he was doing. He was, he was actually getting um, spiritual revelation about these things. And it, it, it brought this message to mind. So in, um, we see David and Saul when Saul was king the problem with Saul was is that he cared more about Israel than he did about God and so we see that in the fact that when he conquered the Amalekites and instead of doing what the Lord told him and destroying all the spoil and not taking anything from them he actually left the king alive I think it was King Agag or something like that. I'm not going to go there. But what happened was Saul's heart for Israel was so strong that he disobeyed the Lord. And so on the other hand, we see David. David had the heart after the Lord. The Lord and David, David followed the Lord, followed um, the Heavenly Father wherever he directed him to he was very much into obeying the father so you see the difference between these two men um these two first two kings of israel saul actually wasn't a bad king he just was too interested a lot like adonijah he was interested in himself and his people and he ignored god right he did he disobeyed the lord and that's how he got taken out the lord's all Dude, I, I, I understand your heart, but it's not all about Israel. It's about me. And so David came along and, and he made it all about the Lord. So then when we then when we flash forward however many years it was, um, I'm not good at my my history, but I know the story. I just don't know the dates. It's not to me. It's not as important as um, the story itself. So we flash forward to the um, the book of Galatians after the Lord had been, um, Jesus Christ had been crucified. We see this same, and this is what the brother was bringing up, 
that same animosity. Saul and David fought. You know, Saul wanted to stay king and David, the Lord said, no, Saul, I'm showing you right now, you're not in charge. David's going to rule, rule your people now. And so Saul didn't like that. Saul thought he was all that. You know, he's a Benjamite like myself. So there's a lot of lessons that I have to learn about giving and um, caring about other people. And you can see, you can see how I am. I'm not the lovey-dovey um, pastor type. I'm more of a teacher and um, prophet. I'm more likely to to be wild and and tempestuous, but I shouldn't, I can't be that way anymore. I got to learn how to say, I love you, Israel. I love you, believers. I truly love you. I do. And, um, that's hard. It's, that's a difficult place for me being regenerated from such a selfish person as Adonijah and such a, um, warlike tribe as Benjamin. But that being said, um, let's look at Galatians where, um, it, it, the the verbiage in Galatians it's it's Paul and it's his it's his style of writing it's it's Greek and Aramaic mix so and anytime you're reading um, the writings of Paul it's it's kind of convoluted if you're not careful the way it's 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 worded but I'm going to go through it um, so the gospel of uncircumcision one of the biggest issues what we see is when when Paul came back Paul ended up being um, the apostle to the Gentiles and Peter was the apostle to Israel so you see King Saul loved his people but he came back to love all people and Peter was the was King David he loved the Lord, but he didn't love anyone except Israel when he came back. He didn't want the Gentiles. So it's almost like um, these Hebrew Israelites are, are actually turning it on its head because if you look at Paul and you look at Peter in the regeneration, the house of Saul is bringing everyone in and, and the house of Saul is correct. The house of Saul became Paul who came onto the Gentiles and realized how wicked Israel was because he was of that wickedness. And that's where I am. I understand the wickedness of Israel, but David never had to deal with that. David's, David's Israel went perfect. David's Israel was only about his own sin and clearing that up and his son becoming the savior. It was all, it was all peaches and cream and, and he subdued all the other nations, and little did he know that when he did that, he was bringing, he was, he was setting up for the Lord to bring those Gentiles, those heathen nations in. So, I'm gonna read through this. I hope you're following me. Um, so, the gospel of uncircumcision, it's Galatians two, and um, yeah, you, you, I almost have to read this, so it's gonna probably be two lessons. Um, to get what I'm saying about this Saul, David, Paul, Peter thing that um, the brother brought up in his video. Um, 2-1, then 14 years after I went up against Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. We're not talking about Israelite foreigners. We're talking about actual Greeks that don't, didn't know anything about Jerusalem and Ju Judaism except that they were some dudes down down there doing whatever they were doing. The Greeks and the Romans, these people weren't really worried about religion. They were more worried about their fun and games that they were having with their Greek rulers and, and the building up of their um, their society, right? So I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So he's saying it's, it wasn't easy, but it, and I was careful, 
because I know there was a lot of wicked Judites, wicked Pharisees that were that didn't like what I was doing. But neither Titus, who was with me, being Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, but that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Jesus Christ, that they might bring us into bondage. And that's what these, that's what these camps are doing. They're bringing people into bondage through this, um, through this. If you're not Israel, if you're not circumcised, if you don't have your tip of your dick cut off, and follow the laws and follow our doctrine and believe that Joseph is the father of Jesus and the Gentiles can't make it and Esau Edom's the devil. They... Whoa. That's some wicked shit, people. That is not the gospel. Verse 5, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. I don't do I don't just do one video and go, that's it, I'm done. No, I, I have to continue. I have to be here every day. Regardless of what happens in my life. I this is number one on my list. It's like <sighs> verse six, but of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were to make maketh no matter to me. God accepted no man's persons for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. So that's what I'm talking about, about how Paul, he'll, he'll dizzy you with his words. And I guess I'm kind of that way too. Sometimes I, I'm trying to get better about being to the point. And that's why I brought this, that point up that basically what he's saying is, um, these, these guys don't bother me anymore. Right. That's that's basically what he said in so many words. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed onto me as the gospel of the circumcision was onto Peter. That's a key verse right there. But they saw that I'm committed to the Gentiles just like I am. I'm going to I'm an apostle under the Benjamite flag. And Paul came from Saul and Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. That's why I bring this up so many times and consistently is because <coughs> Slock you. These are the things that drive me crazy. Because these guys are are wrong. They're just wrong. So let's continue. I'll, I'll read that again. It's pretty... But contrary-wise, when they saw that the gospel... Of the uncircumcision. Let me see if this phone's working. It is. Thank God. I would have. <laughs> Woo! I would have been. Could you imagine going through all that and then having to start over? <laughs> That's brutal. That happens sometimes too. So I'm just about out of time, but I'm going to read that again. Then we'll come back and we'll finish this message on the regeneration of. Saul, David, Paul, Peter. Um, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed onto me as the gospel of the circumcision was onto Peter. For he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship, to the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. So you, you could kind of in, in some kind of form say, yeah, there was quite a bit of Israelite foreigners around, but this isn't talking about that. This is talking about the other nations. This is talking about people that don't really know Israel. These are, these people don't know Israel, whether they were Israelite foreigners or not. They didn't know the laws. They didn't know the circumcision. They didn't know what the hell Peter was talking about half the time because they weren't they weren't law keepers. They weren't under the Moses um Tanakh law law set. They were they were just living their life. They were innocent little churches like we see now. They don't know they don't understand Israel. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. They, they get to come in <clears throat> under that pure love of the Lord, that faith, that spirit, that spirit of truth. So um, let, me, let me finish this <clears throat> two verses, and then we'll go into <clears throat> where Peter and Paul start arguing about it. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go into the heathen. Heathen, it's not saying Gentile Israelite foreigners. It's saying heathen, that we should go on to the heathen. Cephas, James, and John said, yeah, we're going to give you our right hand. They're pillars of the church. They're in the Jewish temple. James was the, the leader of the temple, the brother of Jesus. Said, yeah, go on to those heathen. Only they, verse 10, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. I'll be back. We'll, um, <clears throat> we'll suss this out a little bit more. That pretty much is the message right there. <clears throat> you get it, but then it, it goes into Peter and Paul um, arguing. I'll be back. <clears throat>